So you have a Rottweiler or a Mastiff, Akita, doesn't really matter. And you want to take great pictures of your dog, but you don't have a professional grade camera. It's common. But you do have a cell phone. Well, I'm going to give you 10 tips how to take amazing photos just using your cell phone. And I'm going to do it now. Cute intro. to welcome everybody back to the stylistic starships they call me Mizzo. let me start by saying batman is back home i'm happy to have him home he hasn't been here all week so it was good to have my partner in crime back doing videos with me and he showed out great for this one this is going to be 10 tips how to take amazing photos by just using your phone i think a lot of us know that the phones nowadays have amazing capabilities and a lot of people just don't know how to maximize it to its full potential first things first you want to make sure that you're always eye level with your dog. What that means is, do not take pictures from above like this, or if you're standing up too high, because your dog is going to look smaller. Imagine this, if you're flying on a plane, things look smaller. It might look cool from an aerial view, but it doesn't look good when you're taking photos, portraits, landscape stuff, it just doesn't look good. So don't do that. Second tip, positioning. You want your dog to be positioned right when you're taking photos. You don't want your dog to have easty westy feet or to be sitting with the you. You don't want the feet to be too close together. You want to be looking right, the way the chest looks good. You don't want your dog sitting on his back legs either. That's called lazy sit. So you're gonna probably need some help to get somebody to get the dog's attention using a toy or its favorite object that it likes to play with. Could be anything with dogs nowadays, right? So it's good to have somebody to help get the dog's attention. In this case, in the video that you're watching, my son Carmichael was in back of me as I'm taking pictures on the phone, getting Max attention as he's staying in position. Now, if you put the dog in a sit or a lay down position, whatever the case may be, typically the dog will stay, but it's better to get the dog's attention using a toy. That way you can tell your helper to make sure that he's moving it the way that the camera is positioned. That way it looks like the dog is looking straight into the lens of the camera. So positioning is key. No lazy sitting, no easty westy feet. Um, Make sure you're paying attention to the details of how your dog's position when you're taking the picture. Number three, time of day. This video was shot in golden hour. Golden hour is either early in the morning when the sun is rising or in the evening when the sun is setting. We just had daylight savings time here in the States. So the sun is setting a little bit earlier. When you shoot at this time of day, it's good because you get that kind of lens flare effect when the sun is going down. Also, it's not too hot for the dog. If you shoot in the middle of the day with a dog, it tend to pant a little bit more. Dogs tend to not give you the best photos because the dog is overexerting itself and it's hot. So you wanna make sure the dog isn't too hot. You're not shooting in the middle of the day. Early in the morning and the evening is typically the best time to shoot because you're gonna get the best photos during that time. Number four, burst mode slash hold down the shutter. It's good to shoot dogs like this because you might have the dog that's moving a lot, who doesn't just stay still like how Mac is doing in this video. And it's easier to capture the dog if you're continuously holding down the shutter and it's gonna catch multiple images at once, multiple frames per second, multiple images at one time. Number five, focus your Roddy. Okay, this is key. So you wanna make sure that your dog is in focus, okay? Usually on most of the, the Phones nowadays is a little box where you can press and it's gonna focus on the subject that you want. Always keep your dog in focus, focus on the eyes, it's key. Number six, I talked about this a little bit, but you wanna shoot in portrait mode as well. Portrait mode is good to give in that blurry background which is called depth of field. And typically in portrait mode on most of these newer phones, it's gonna give you that effect. It looks good because it's focusing on the subject and everything in the background is blurry. And it just is real appealing to the eye, it just looks good for portraits. Um, for some landscape stuff, it looks good. So try to shoot in portrait mode, play with it a little bit because it's gonna give you a nice effect and it's gonna enhance the images, make it look so much better. So shoot in portrait mode. Number seven, what's in your frame? Pay attention to what's around your dog as you're shooting. What's on the floor? You know, is it dirty sneakers next to the floor? Is there a pair of shorts? Is there somebody in the background? Is, you know, you wanna make sure that your image is clean. That way your viewer, which is what you're posting for people to look at the picture of your dog isn't confused as to what the subject is you know that's that's key make sure you pay attention to 
everything that's inside the frame and it looks clean it looks good number eight understanding horizontal versus vertical and when to use it horizontal is good for landscape photos horizontal. but it also looks good if you're further vertical. away in the back and you want to get a nice wide shot because it's going to be more width than it is height and you want to just have a little bit more inside the frame you're using a rule of thirds and you have your dog to the left or to the right and i typically shoot like this a lot it's a habit of mine because for cinematic video you want to shoot horizontal anyway and if you're going for that cinematic look a little bit different from photos but i typically always shoot horizontal i just i like how it looks um shooting vertical is good if you're trying to see more height um it looks good for in portraits horizontal does as well but it looks good in portraits because you can kind of zoom in get your dog's face you know see the features in your dog and if you look at a lot of model photos where it's full body images a lot of them are horizontal so knowing when to use horizontal and vertical for in shooting with your phone is going to be key because most people when they're taking a picture of their dog they're going to hold their phone like this because the phone is naturally set up for you to just hold it up vertical and just snap a picture most people don't do this when they're taking a picture of their dog but it just looks good and it just it something to just to me i like it i shoot horizontal just learn given the situation what you're trying to do if you should shoot horizontal or shoot vertical do you want more height or do you want more width number nine stop using filters so filters look good on us but for dogs it might can be a little bit excessive. You might put too much, make, might make your dog blacker or lighter than what your dog actually is. So it's best if you download Snapseed, which is the app that I use, and several others. I'm not gonna give you all my secrets, but I'll tell you one that I do use is Snapseed. And you can kind of tune up your photos and make them look amazing without overdoing it. Number 10, the last tip, upload from your computer. What do I mean by that? Okay. So have you ever seen when you upload a, a video or a picture to from your phone? Have you ever seen when you upload a video or a picture from your phone to Facebook, Instagram, whatever the case may be, and seems like the quality might be stepped on a little bit? That's because it is. So if you airdrop it or Bluetooth from your phone to your laptop or computer and then you upload from there, the quality tends to sustain itself or be better. For some reason, when you go from your phone to the app that you're using, it just kind of gets stepped on and I just don't like how it looks. So 10 tips, I hope you guys found these tips helpful. I'm gonna try to do a little bit more videos like this. This is kind of a little different from Rottweiler vlogs, but it helps people who have Rottweilers and other breeds as well because you wanna take good pictures of your dog, right? So if you like me, you love me, you love everything about me, you love this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'm gonna check you in the next video. Peace.